Myself, I'm Adele Murphy from Murphy Motivation and you're here with Georgie as well, so thanks for joining me Georgie. You're welcome. Um, we're down here at the Maidstone Nutrition Hub and we just wanted to share Georgie's story uh, behind her picture transformation. Um, so let's crack on. You ready to go? Absolutely. Awesome. So first question Georgie. How did you approach that, you know, your weight loss journey? So you've, you've lost six and a half stone now. And what was really important for you before you got started on that journey, if you'd like to share with everybody? Um, I think really the most important thing for me, um, I mean, I was quite overweight. I'd always been relatively fit and then life got in the way. Um, and I think like so many women, so many men, <sighs> you sort of lose track of, of, of where you are. You don't actually see the weight piling on. You don't see your life changing in any shape or form. And then one day you look in the mirror and you go, okay, I've got to do something. And really the, the, the kicker for me was, as I say, I was really, really fit. I used to run quite a lot of marathons. And I noticed that I couldn't do those things anymore. Um, and that was really quite worrying. Um, and obviously with the amount of weight that I was carrying, diabetes was a real possibility. And yeah. so I needed to really get my head in the game and look at and be honest with myself. I think that was that was the real thing for me, that that real honesty of looking at myself and going, OK, I can't I'm, I'm not the same person that I was six months ago, even a year ago. This weight has crept on. What do I do? And mentally that that was tough. That was really, really challenging. And so I needed to make sure that I got myself into a place whereby I was thinking, right, I'm going to do this. Mm. And why, what are the reasons behind what I'm doing? One, obviously, it was about my health. Yeah. Two, and I think, let's call a spade a spade here. If you are overweight, and I genuinely was, the confidence isn't quite the same. Mm. And so I wanted to be more confident about the way that I looked and the way that I felt. It wasn't just a physical transformation. It was about how I felt inside and how I approach life. And so I needed to make sure that that mindset was right. So do you think it was very much about accepting where you were in order for you to take those first steps? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, I think having spoken to a lot of people here are on a similar sort of journey as mm. well, those first steps um, are quite difficult. Mm. Um, in order to be able to gear yourself up for that, yeah. because let's let's put it, you know, call a spade a spade here. When you put on that amount of weight, it doesn't just creep on o overnight. Yeah. It, it, it is a gradual sort of thing. So you're not going to lose it overnight. Yeah. So you yeah. have to be prepared to be in that journey for for the long haul, but always have those motivating sort of factors in there, the reasons why you're actually doing that. And if they are solid, then you're building on a solid foundation. So for me, that was really really important to approach it in a more positive way rather than I've got six and a half stone to lose or this is my target weight. It was just, do you know what? I need to be fitter. I need to feel better about myself. Mm. So that's, that was my starting point. Awesome. Okay, so what did your program look like? So when you very first started, what mm. did it look like? And, and how did you find it? Was it easy? Was it difficult? How was your, your mindset? Because obviously you've told everybody here mm. about how it was very important for you to get the yeah. head in the right place. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what was your program like? Um, I was on um, the Herbalife um, weight loss or weight management sort of program. So mm. that consisted of two shakes um, a day. Obviously, two snacks, morning snack, afternoon sort of snack, um, and then eating well in the evening as well. So I approached it like that. For the first probably week when my body was going into detox, it yeah. was tough. Yeah. But um, I just stuck, stuck to it like glue. I knew that actually I needed to do something, so I downed the water. I had three litres of water a yeah. day consistently. I took my F2, I was on my shakes, and then... Um, yeah, that's what it, I was just really consistent with that. And I wouldn't say that there was loads of exercise in there, but there was, there was a, a, enough. I was doing Movement. something, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was doing something daily in order to be able to be fueling my body and kick-starting my body and making sure that that, that calorie deficit was, was, was big enough in order for me to be able to see the, the, the changes. Brilliant. So basically sticking to the plan, yeah. eating five times a day yeah. with your yeah. shakes and your food. Absolutely. Drinking yeah. three litres of water. Yeah. And lots of fish, lots of veg, yeah, all of those things. Yeah, awesome. Definitely. Awesome. So it's been 10 months yeah, and you've months. lost six and a half stone. That yeah. is insane. Yeah. Um, so it is a long time, obviously, to stay consistent. Mm -hmm. 
So what helped keep you focused and kept you on track and I suppose accountable mm. to yourself because obviously you were doing this for yourself yeah. um, to keep that focus going the whole time? I think for me, what I realised very early on in that programme is that I wanted to keep it relatively fresh. Mm. So although I started off with a programme looking like with the two shakes and everything, it did change over, to, over time. So I added more products in, more proteins, so like the PDM, the, yeah. um, the protein drink mix. That was a real game changer for me. Um, when I first started my programme, I was on soya milk with the, with the shakes and I slowly dropped that out. Yeah. I slowly dropped the protein bars out and added something else in. So the aloe came in as well. Yeah. Um, Otapa fibre was, was there consistently. And I think because my body was changing, I needed to change that, that programme yeah. up. Um, and I think, obviously, when I joined um, your, your community, that gave me more of an insight as mm. well. So I would say that that was a real changing factor for me. When I started to feel more confident, body confident, yeah. um, added a bit more exercise in there, started to surround myself with other people who crazy were on a people. similar... Crazy <laughs> people. who were on a similar sort of journey to me. Yeah. Um, and that kept it fresh as well. So you're getting different sort of stimulus. You're getting yeah. different motivating sort of factors in there you're getting more knowledge as well obviously I, I started off doing a 21 day um, challenge and then I swapped to your 28 yeah. day challenge and just having that that I don't know that support I yeah. think it was a really like the big online support or the the support just here in the hall or just a bit of everything a bit of everything really yeah. I mean obviously I think people who are on a similar journey they go to the same sort of sorts of places yeah. so you're online and coming to your fitness classes. It was just a little bit to just keep me motivated, keep me going. Um, and I think my own goals started to change as well and how I was achieving that. So mm. my goals now are completely different to the goals so that, that I had mm. um, when I first started. And I was really comfortable with that. And I think for me, it's a case of being not too hard on yourself because yeah. you have good and bad days. Yeah. Um, being able to go, no, I will get there, and having that reassurance and having the support within the community was, was really, really vital. So you, you're talking about support and that yeah. in regards to the community and that, um, and then obviously uh, your co coach. So do you think yeah. that having a coach is very, very important as part of your journey to keep you accountable, as well as the online and the, the local support? Yeah, yeah I'd say it, it's... Everybody's different and you have to take in, mm. into account that. But if, if you are starting a journey that is as big as mine, yeah. and I think that I have come a lot a long way, I think that you can't underestimate that support. And you've got to be honest. So if you're not honest with your coach, you're not going to get those yeah. results. So you have to have that working relationship. And I was just fortunate that, that I did have a, have a good relationship with the coach yeah um and i could and i felt that i could be honest and if i was struggling with you know doing the food diaries looking at mm. exactly what you're eating is absolutely vital because at the start you're a bit all over the place yeah, yeah. and you're going okay well am i doing this absolutely right well the scales aren't moving and this isn't doing this mm. and you just need that experience so i do think it's really vital i do think it, it, it's good to have that connection yeah. and i think certainly when you're going into the online sort of community as well the ability to be able to share your own experience that's what i'm finding at the moment that mm. i'm able to give people that experience to just go no i i was there six months ago or yeah, yeah. i was there eight months ago i absolutely hear what you're saying and have that trusted sort of voice it's another it's another support network it, it's vital it really is vital brilliant brilliant so obviously now um you're you're you've changed yeah. and you're currently on our 28th Day challenge yep. and you've been with us for since last July now doing that yeah. um, what is your next focus so what are you so you've lost the six and a half stone yeah. obviously you've said and explained to everybody that things have changed over that time you've changed your program you've stayed yeah. in touch with your coach and all that yeah. but what is your next focus now so you've you have pretty much much lost a small child uh -huh. yeah <laughs> it's and I think one of the first things that, you know, that took me a bit of time is when you lose that amount of weight, first of all, you've got to get a new wardrobe because that's just nothing. <laughs> costs a lot of money, yeah. Costs a lot of money. So just be prepared for that when you, when you do lose the, the weight. But you have to then almost like take a little bit of a step back and go, God, I've actually achieved that. And I, you know, whether you thought that you were going to achieve it or you didn't think that you were going to achieve it, 
take a moment, take a breath and give yourself a slap on the back and go, well, I've done that. But for me, being the person that I am, um, for this 28 day challenge, I'm looking at creating abs. Yeah. Which isn't gonna be a quick fix because I, I had a lot to sort of tone up and what have you. So that that's, that's a, a, a good challenge for me, yeah. just to get fitter. But I think really for me, um, the overarching is to just accept, accept that actually I look much better. Yeah. I feel absolutely fantastic. Do you feel strong? I feel strong. I feel strong and I feel mentally strong yeah, and I think good. resilient and robust and I yeah. think that those are probably the, the best that's the best transformation as yeah. far as I'm concerned not just the physical but for the mental emotional yeah. and just to be able to go do you know what I can do whatever I choose to do yeah and that's that's got to be a positive thing so abs and abs abs as we know are made in the kitchen so 80 percent nutrition uh, twenty percent exercise. So you're getting the. Do you feel you're getting the balance a lot more? Whereas I know you yeah. mentioned you used to run marathons and yeah, stuff. Do you yeah. feel that like you maybe didn't feel as good then in comparison to now? Do you, are you finding that you're becoming more knowledgeable from? Definitely. Okay. I think I think one of the things that's really really good is that you get a real sense of what your body actually needs. Mm. I mean, I'm very very aware of how my body um, likes to accept its fuel and mm -hmm. how it uses its fuel now. Yeah. And I think that once you have that knowledge, you can push even, even harder and you can, you, you, know, you can challenge yourself even more. So uh, yeah, I'd say that my knowledge is, is, is so much, much better and I'm able to actually um, fuel my, better, my body better. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so before we go, um, I would love you to share with everybody some mm. top tips. Mm. Um, if there's anything that you can think of that if there's someone out there embarking on their own journey and they're a bit unsure because in my opinion that's always the hardest mm. is just taking that first step and as I always say you don't have to be great to start but you have to start to be great so have you any top tips to give everybody? Yeah um, probably too many um, I think the most important thing for me was to decide why I was embarking on, the, on this journey because if you always have that in your mind then it makes the journey a hell of a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So whatever that motivation is, stick to that. And remember that when you're having your, your sort of dark days. And I think probably the most important thing as, as well is to be kind to yourself. Yeah. Don't beat yourself up. If you go and have a chocolate bar and this and the other, to, you know, tomorrow is another day and you can start again. And you're gonna have those mm. bad times where you slip off, it's not quite right, or you didn't drink your, your three liters, or mm. just take a step back and go, do you know what? Doesn't mean to say that it, it's not working, doesn't mean mm. to say that I'm never gonna get there, but realize it, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a long journey, but it's a worthwhile journey, and so it, just be kind. And it's not a diet, it's like a lifestyle change. Definitely. It's creating those healthy yeah. habits. Right? Definitely, I would say that. Yeah. I mean, my whole approach to the way that I eat my food is, is completely diff, um, different now. I than take you still eat chocolate ago. and crisps though, yeah? Are you normal? <laughs> I would say, do you know what? I used to love a good packet of crisps, but I, I tend to steer away from those trigger foods because right. I know right. that, but at the end of the day, I've swapped them for other things. Banana bread is just <laughs> to die for. PDA is just to die for. Um, yeah. But it's about making those healthier choices. Yeah. So if you fancy a bit of a cake, do it with you know your, your protein drink mix or find a recipe that actually is low carb or mm. lower fats. Just substitute. Don't just strip everything out. Yeah. And I probably would say that's really, really important as well. Get that balance. Get that balance in your life and get that balance in your in your sort of eating habits and you're onto a winner then. Brilliant. Okay guys, so I uh, just want to say thanks so much to Georgie for joining us. It's been incredible to hear her story. Um, as we said, the story behind the picture, just not the transformation picture. So uh, yeah, Georgie, get a touch. Yep. Boom. <laughs>